Hello everyone and welcome to the default scene. My name is Jacob and I'm going to be taking you through how to create tracked callout titles in Blender. You can download the shot that I used in this tutorial from Pexels if you want to follow along. The link is in the description below. So let's get started. First, let's go ahead and start by creating our callout titles. I'm going to delete everything in my scene and then I'm going to create some text. I'm also going to create a camera and hit Alt R and Alt G to center my camera and clear its rotation. Then I will rotate my camera 90 degrees along the X axis and pull it back along the Y axis so that it can see my text. I'll also have my text rotated 90 degrees along the X axis. Now let's type something that would go into a callout title. I'm gonna type bindings that will never break. This should work for various motorsports. I'm going to spend a little bit of time and adjust my text so that I like how it looks and choose a font that I like. Next, I want a border around my text. So I'm going to go ahead and create a plane and then I'm going to go into edit mode and scale that plane so that it covers my text entirely. Now I'm going to clear the rotation and scale and then subdivide it 10 times. I'll delete the rows of edges that are on the second from the top and the second from the bottom. And then I'm going to bevel the four corner vertices of my plane. Once I'm satisfied with my bevel, I'm going to select all of the internal vertices of my plane and hit X and delete vertices. This will leave me just with the outside ring of vertices and edges. Now I'll go to Object, Convert To, and Curve. The last step is to go ahead and select one segment of your curve. For me, I'm going to choose the final segment between this long top edge and the start of the bevel. I'll select the two points on that curve and then hit X and delete segment. Then I'll extrude this segment out and using the 3D cursor, I'll snap my extruded curve point back so that there's no gap in my curve. Once that's done, I can go to the geometry and bevel dropdown menu and increase the depth. This gives me the ability to animate the start and the stop of the curve by animating the factor start and factor end. Next, I'm going to create a, a second plane, merge together the two points on the left and the two points on on the right and I'll snap those points points along my boundary curve and then I'll convert it again by going to object convert to and curve last but not least I want a dot that follows my subject in my scene so I'm going to create one more plane and a sphere I'll scale the sphere down somewhat and then I'll bevel the vertices on my plane once my plane has been beveled I'll hit X and delete only faces then I can convert this edge to a curve and from the geometry and bevel drop down menu, I can give it some thickness. Last but not least, I'm going to give my sphere a new material and change the principal BSDF to a white emission shader. By adding an emission shader to my geometry, it will lose all depth and make it appear 2D in my scene. Finally, I'll add that same material to all of my other geometry. Now I'm going to open up a VFX and motion tracking workspace and I'll bring my footage into my scene. With my footage loaded up, I'm going to go ahead and figure out how much footage I want to track. For me, this is about 300 frames. Now I'll I'll just choose a place on this back rider here that I want to track and I'll track by control left mouse button clicking to add a tracker and then using the track forward and track backward buttons. You'll see that my tracker fails often and I just have to keep manually moving it back into place and then continue tracking. Once I'm done tracking, I go through and refine a few spots where I feel like the track missed. Next, I'll head over into the solve tab and from the geometry drop down menu, I'll select link empty to track. Now, I can switch back to my layout workspace. I'll divide my 3D workspace in half. For the left half, I'll hit zero on my number pad to go into camera view. And this way I can see what I'm doing. First, I'm going to select my sphere and its outlining geometry. I'll move them into place over my rider. Next, I'm going to move this pipe that we've created into place. And then I'm going to tab into edit mode and select one of the curve points and hit control H to add a hook. I'll do that for the other control point as well. This will allow us to move the different control points while in object mode. The bottom hook I will snap to the outer edge of the sphere and its surrounding geometry. And the top hook I will snap to the border surrounding the text. You can see on the border surrounding my sphere, I forgot to delete one segment and extrude out a new curve 
curve point. If you don't do this, the curve will not be able to be animated. Finally, I'm going to select the hook of the bottom control point of our straight pipe. I'm going to select the border of our sphere and our sphere itself and parent those to the empty that we created from our tracker. And then I'll refine the position of the sphere according to my footage. Now I'm going to animate this. I find that the best way to animate is to go a few frames in and add keyframes to everything. Then go back to the start and scale or animate the start and end of or animate the start and end of our curve so that everything is disappeared. Now it's just a matter of defining our timing. Once I've finished doing this, I can go ahead and select everything and then just duplicate my animated keyframes out and scale them by hitting S, X, and then negative one. This will reverse all of the motion that we created. I can place my animated keyframes along the timeline where I want my callout title to be animated and disappear. Finally, we just need to do a small bit of compositing work. Head into the compositor and add in a movie clip node and an alpha over node. Then select your clip from the movie clip node and put the image output from your movie clip node into the top input of the alpha over. Then put your render layers node, then put the image output of the renders layer node into the bottom socket of the alpha over node. And finally plug the alpha over node into your composite output node. Two final settings we need to make before we're through. Go over to the render settings and down at the bottom color management change from filmic to standard otherwise your footage will be washed out and finally under the render settings and film drop down menu make sure you tick on transparent now if you render out the scene you'll be able to see your animated call out title that follows your subject in your scene i hope this has been helpful for you thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time <laughs>